So today I'm going to be unboxing, assembling and installing my new Spider Farmer G4500 450 watt dimmable, daisy chainable, full spectrum LED glow light. When I started shopping for a new grow light online, I saw a lot of good reviews for the Spider Farmer SE series. And when I got onto their website to have a browse, I also saw the G series, which were cheaper, looked the same and had a lot of similar specs. I couldn't find too much about them online, which is why I'm doing this video. But according to the Spider Farmer website, the difference between the G and the SE is the diodes. The SEs use Samsung and the Gs use Bridge Lux. Now, I had to do a bit of research about Bridge Lux, but from what I could find, they're supposed to be pretty reliable. Anyway, I thought I'd give it a go. I decided to go with the G4500 because the quoted coverage area is three foot by five foot or four foot by two foot for commercial growers, but that should go pretty well with the dimensions of my grow rack. Now, I don't have a par tester or a fancy temperature measuring gun, but I will attempt to give you my thoughts on the brightness and the heat that the unit gives off once I install it at the end. If you want any further details about this light, I suggest you head across to the Spider Farmer website and have a look. Okay, so let's have a look at what was in the box. We've got the instruction manual, we've got four light bars, you've got the end frames, uh, they look like some kind of mounts uh, power cord, the hang system, and some kind of Ethernet cable. I guess there's some kind of plugs. So it doesn't look like it's going to be too hard to put together, but let's have a quick look. So I'm just going to get the driver and these bits and pieces out of the way for now. And we'll lay these out upside down at about the same spacing as those bars. Just like that. Clip them in. Yep, they're a snapping clip, that's nice and easy. So obviously making sure that the wire end goes up that end. Yeah, they clip in quite nicely there. So next we need to flip it over so the LEDs are facing down and connect up all the lights. Turn to lock. So the next part is to mount the driver. Now this little bag of fitting, these are for mounting the driver. So these little, these little clips just slot into the side there and I'll move the driver into the middle roughly just so that we have an even weight distribution to start with I'm not sure what that is it looks like one of those clips I guess it's a spare now the last step I think is well we need to connect this Now the last bit, I think these need to screw in from underneath. So, see? There, no, nah, dropped it. There, I can't see through my hand, but that screws in. And then we just have to do the others the same way. So that's the driver screwed into place. Now at this stage we're basically done. I just have to work out the hanging system. So we've got a cord with a cap couple of carabiners and another cord. And then we've got some what appears to be stainless steel type wire I think I see where this is going. These clip into these little holes in the end frames. And it 
hangs at that end by that loop. Same at the other end. And then, so these cords are on a little pulley with a little locking mechanism. When I unlock that, it slides up and down like that. So I assume this clip clips on here and when you take it all the way up as tight as it'll go to there, this is the height I'm looking for so I can factor that into my frame build. Hook the other one over on the other side. Last thing is the power cable. Plug that in there. And there we have it. We might just tidy that up. So it's probably worth mentioning that you don't have to clip the controller onto the light. You can actually move that off into a separate space. But for me, I'm happy with it mounted on the light. Now I'll tidy up this mess. Okay, after a bit of fiddling around, this is quite inconvenient. I think I'm gonna clip it up, maybe cable tie to that clip or something where it won't get in the way. Maybe I'll, I might give that some more thought. But that crucial height that I'm interested in, 30 centimeters, 12 inches. So now that I know how far the light will hang down from the frame, I can calculate the height of my corner pieces. So I need to factor in the maximum height of the plants I intend to grow in here, plus leave a little bit more room so that the light isn't touching the top of them, and then plus 30 centimetres on top of that because that's how far the light will hang down from the front. So my first impressions are, it seems like a fairly well-made light. It goes together fairly easily. I like the fact that you can mount the driver on the light or move it off into a different space. The extra cord can be a little bit annoying and I'll just need to come up with some creative way of tucking that out of the way, but I'm sure that won't be too much of an issue. So now I'm gonna step away and put together the frame that this will be hanging on and then we'll see what it looks like in situ. So this is where I'll be hanging the light. This is my garage NFT system and I'm extending it up a level and I'll be making a separate video about that whole process. First, let's have a quick look at this mounting system. It's just a clip on a one-way pulley. You can pull in one direction to lift. You can release the clip to lower. You can hang it with this at the top or at the light. In my case, I'm gonna hang it at the light because I don't wanna to have to get a ladder every time I wanna raise or lower it. Now let's hang it up there. That's the two hangers in position. Now I've run my power cord off in the direction to where my power points are and I still haven't come up with a good way of managing this cable situation here but I'll get onto that later. Now to raise the light all I have to do is pull on this and you can see that's how you raise it. And to lower the light just under the clip and let it go down like that. I'm gonna finish off a few things on the rack, tidy up those cables, and then we'll turn it on and see how it glows. And here we have it in position and over the plants. Now, my first impression is that it's a lot brighter than my 60 watt lights down below, which is exactly what you'd expect. Now, it's been running at 100% for a couple of hours now, and I can still comfortably touch those bars and the driver. It's warm, but it's actually absolutely fine. I really can't see that causing any problems with heat buildup. Now, I don't have any of the technical instrumentation to measure brightness or, or temperature, but I will be able to keep you appraised of the performance for the plants over the coming weeks. I've ended up just coiling that excess wire up into a loop and tying it in place with a couple of zip ties. So at this stage, my general sense is that I'm pretty happy with this light. 
but at the end of the day, we'll have to wait until we start growing some flowers and some chilies, and we'll see if it can produce some good yields out of these plants. If you're interested in keeping track of the ongoing performance of this light, keep an eye on my channel, and I'll be providing regular updates over the coming weeks. And if you found this video helpful, hit the thumbs up, and thanks for watching. Hydroponics.